So welcome to uh, the second episode of 271 Tech Speak. Uh, I'm Dan Kirkbride back again. Um, once again, our goal with this podcast is to just kind of take a look at some uh, good and important things that are going around in our district with regards to uh, technology in the classroom. Uh, today with me, I've got uh, Jody Booth, an English teacher from over at Camfield Middle School. Um, in her biography that she sent me ahead of time, she uh, talked about remembering creating websites in HTML and uh, that she's been their, the building technology leader uh, in some capacity. And, and Jody, you could fill in a little bit here for at least 12 of the 16 years of teaching. So uh, thanks for joining us, Jody. You bet. Thanks for having me. Is there anything else that you uh, feel like we should know or? No, just not to be afraid to try new stuff because from HTML and getting my first emails to uh, this, don't be afraid to try it because a lot changes and changes rapidly, but just hold on and go for it. <laughs> and that's good advice, yeah, definitely. And just grab something and, and <laughs> yeah. give it a try, right? <laughs> yeah, because even the, the Google Drive, Google Classroom, Google stuff has changed even from the beginning of the year when we started using it. So you just have to be ready for that one constant change. Right, yeah. And that's a good segue right there because uh, I asked you to come and talk about something in Google Drive that you've started using and, and you and I kind of, I guess, battled with a little bit um, <laughs> earlier this year. Um, and that's using Gubrick, which is a, um, I guess, a web extension, we'd call it, to attach a rubric to some digital work for students. So let's start with maybe you could just describe to us, like, as a teacher, when you take a look at, at Octopus and Rubric and Gubrick, how would you describe it? Well, all those words sound really weird, first of all. Gubrick. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but basically, it's an electronic rubric. For me to be able to have my rubric electronically attached to assignments, so I never have to shuffle papers back and forth. I don't have to worry about kids losing their rubric, especially when a parent calls or emails, hey, how come my kid got a 67%? You know, I graded 150 of them. I don't remember why he got a 67. And I gave him the rubric back with the paper, so I have no idea, really. Uh, I can give a vague response, but this way it gives me a place that I can go pull it up right away. I can see every little mark that I made on it. I can see the kids' writing. I've got sample writings for when we have SAT or MBT, you know, those student assessment teams where we're looking at, you know, does this kid need some special services or are they qualified for an honors program? I have writing samples all the time then. Uh, just the, it's nice to be able to attach it right there. Plus, you know, teachers write in cursive a lot, and kids don't know how to read cursive. <laughs> so it's real fast and easy for me to write, you know, this is a run on or whatever, even some of my codes. But they don't always know what the comment means. And sometimes it's a really nice, positive, encouraging comment for them to continue writing this descriptively. And it's lost on them because they can't decipher it. <laughs> so to be able to type it in and have it electronically really gives them more feedback, too. So it's it's helpful for their parents to see the details. I have writing samples, and so I just like that I don't have to shuffle papers around, and I always have their writing uh, feedback at my fingertips. Okay, and is it a uh, complicated thing to set up, or do you feel like it's easy enough that that it's it's worth the time that it takes? It's definitely worth the time, but I will say initially there are a lot of steps. And so even when I did it in the fall, and like I said, there were some changes, and then I went back to do it, you have to really review and make sure that you're following all of the steps. So it can be cumbersome initially, the first couple times especially, but when I went in and did it again in the last assignment, it came a lot faster. So I think it's worth the effort you put in initially up front because it does save time. Even kids turning in assignments later, it does still make the time worth it. It gets faster and faster the more you do it. Okay. And so you, you talked a little bit about you know the fact that you are able to sort of track and keep 
um, progress and, and you've got the kind of the samples available to you all the time. But um, what about like the writing process? Does it change how you approach the writing process with your students and as far as the feedback that you're able to then give them during the process? Yeah, one of the goals that I set at the beginning of the year that I wanted to work on was data-driven instruction and more student feedback. And because just the sheer number of having 140, 150 students a year, it's hard to give them a lot of feedback on their paper. And so I found that, that using the electronic rubric, using Gubrick, gives me the opportunity to, to one, give feedback they can read, but also that I find myself actually writing more, which at first was a little bit frustrating because as a little teacher, I wanted to be less time consuming, but I was giving them better quality feedback, and I require them to, or I give them the option, I guess I should say, to revise work along their paper to improve their grade. And now, because they can read the comments, and it's so easy to do at home and school in their Google Drive, I'm getting more revisions on their paper. So something that may have started out kind of a C paper, they're writing it again so that it's a B quality, they're writing it again and continuing to increase their score. And of course, everybody's not doing that. But I'm getting more students revising their papers now than ever before because of the little comments and suggested editing that you can do in Google Drive. And because the rubric shows them exactly the, their deficiencies, just like they did before, but it was in their binder, and now they have it electronically, so it's easier to access it and they don't lose it. And do you think that they're a little more driven to um, make those revisions kind of before they get to what we would call like the final draft because of that feedback, and they feel like they might because you know, I remember giving a lot of feedback on rough drafts and stuff and then giving it back and then students, you know, may or may not take my suggestion. For the kids who get their rough drafts in earlier, yes. I haven't given a lot of quality feedback on the rough drafts. That's something I would rather put in more time on rough draft comments than I do on the, the final. So far I haven't really used it a lot during the actual writing process. It's been more of comments on their final, and then because I let them revise it, they can continue to work on it. So let's talk a little bit about what that feedback looks like. So talk about what it what it would look like, what the kind of the process for students would would look like. While students are working, even before they've turned in your paper, their paper, they you can put comments and suggestions on what they're doing. Like sometimes when they're doing research, I go in and make sure they're citing correctly and I'll make suggestions and comments. So this is before they've even turned in a work so it can be in progress. And you know, because a lot of times when they're on the computers and you've got those X amount of days where they're working, you don't have a lot to grade yet. It's kind of like the calm before the storm. So I'll go in and try and put some comments and try and prevent some of those mistakes before I have to grade it. And mm -hmm. so you can put comments or you can put suggestions where you can actually put in the comma and it comes up a different color. So we'll see if I can get you over to that screen and show you that. So it's really small on my screen. I don't know if you can see it very well, but you can see I have all these little suggestions over here. So in editing mode, you can actually put in punctuation marks and they have to either accept it or uh, deny it. Uh, and then there's also, you can change this to say comments where you can you know, are you sure this is what you meant here? Or you can put in little comments and then they can again resolve it or keep it. The cool thing when they turn it in and you attach the rubric, it actually just puts it right on the bottom. It shows you their score, shows them their score and then it and then their comment your comments as well. So this is what I was talking about where you always have their writing access in the rubric to show parents. This oh, okay. is what let's see. And it emails it to the kid as soon as you're done grading it. Well, that's nice. So that they not only get it on their paper, but they also get an email so that they know that you've graded the their work as well. Yeah. So they don't have to wait till school the next day and stuff. So it's nice. And then it makes it real easy to resolve. And really, it becomes somewhat of a checklist of what they need to fix, and they can just boom, 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 fix them and check them off too. So. 
So that's what a finished paper looks like with the rubric. And, and do you find that when you go in and do those, you know, you were talking about looking at their citations and looking at some of their, you know, the, I guess what we would consider to be your editing mistakes and that kind of thing. When you're doing that ahead of time, do you find that the, the time that you spend grading the papers in the end might be a little bit less? Yes. If I start putting more time into the rough draft feedback, I will not have to spend as much time on their final draft. Okay. Because they'll have fixed all those mistakes. I haven't done that yet. This is the first year I've really tinkered around with it. So the first one, I was real heavy on the end. The second time was a smaller assignment, so I spent more time getting feedback in the process, and then it didn't take as long at the end. Okay. So here's an example of a one I haven't graded yet. And so the Gubert, there's several steps on you know how you get the Gubert, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when I go to grade it. And this is a change they've made just recently where the rubric's up at the top. So again, this is a rubric that I created. So you just click on the one you want, you switch to the next tab for the next thing. And then this is where you type in your comments. And then it will email it to him right there, and it will put it on the bottom of the paper. And I will okay. not send it to him because he would freak out and see that. Right. You're like, whoa, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, sorry, I didn't even read it, bud. Yeah. So it and, that's nice. and, and in this new interface, too, they have um, updated it so you don't have to open each uh, paper in a different window, is that correct? Yes, and I haven't done that yet, so um, because I, I didn't require every student turn in this letter electronically, so I only had about six in each class that did it. Okay. okay. So I don't know how to advance it to the next paper. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. It says next right there. Yeah, they're updating it all the time, which is what's so fantastic. I think you're constantly having to, you know, learn some new little things, but that's okay because they're improving it every time. Right. Yeah, there's so the next good paper. Okay. So you can just jump paper to paper, click yeah, right here. Yeah, right here in the next. And then where do those, so that as they're going paper to paper, you've submitted that, you paste the rubric down at the bottom and emails it to the student, as an instructor, where do they have, you know, an idea of where you can look back at those rubric scores? So it puts it on an Excel, Excel spreadsheet for me. So like here are the three I haven't graded yet. Carson turned it in twice, so it's actually only two. But. Oh, okay. So then this is where you could go back and as the instructor you could look at what papers you've been able to grade what their rubric scores are, and yeah. that kind of thing. So these tabs at the bottom, the rubric scores, as soon as I grade those three, it'll show it right there. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, kids turn in late work, so it's nice because there's a feature where it'll ingest new assignments and stuff. So the, the best thing is I give them feedback more often. It's legible. And they can't lose anything. It's all electronic. That's why I like it. Yeah, and it looks like it's fairly easy once you get the setup process done to, as the instructor to go in and do that. Yeah, it does. It's worth the setup, though. It's worth it. It does. I know. You know. You talked about us fighting with it a little bit. There is a little bit of a headache at some point at the beginning, because it's, it's a high learning curve right at the beginning, but it is worth it. I encourage people to try it. All right. And not, be, not be afraid of it. Yeah. And so, aside from encouraging people to try it and not being afraid of it, what would be, like, your number one piece of advice for somebody if they're like, hey, I want to try setting up Doctopus and Gubrick and, and give this whole thing a try? Send Dan Kirkbride an appointment, and he will come help you. <laughs> uh, really, the 
the Google Drive class during collaboration is what got me in the class, Google Classroom and Google. And that gave me enough information to go try it and be confident to do it on my own. And you had that good PowerPoint directions on how to do it. Mm -hmm. and, you know, but really, if someone's tentative, just having you there as they try it out. And even if they just pilot it with one class, some nice kids that are willing to, you know, be patient. All right. Well, thank you, Jody, for uh, being willing yeah. to uh, talk to us about it and give us kind of a, a good preview of what it looks like and, and how it's helped you. And uh, hopefully we can get a few more people to give it a try. And um, I'm going to post some links here at the end on uh, how they can get started. I'll probably include that presentation with the steps and, yeah. and that so they can see that. And you're, people are certainly welcome to email me. Don't tweet me or anything like that. I don't do all that crazy stuff, but you can email me, and I'd be happy to help whenever I can. But Dan's got more time for that. I've got 150 papers to grade every um, <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. Well, speaking of, things, speaking yeah. of that, you probably need to go grade some papers, right? Yeah, I do. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jody. Thank you.